joined by Ian Murphy from the Iron Pig Smokehouse. He uh, has been tracking what we're going to talk about here. He has tip staff, obviously. He owns a restaurant up in Gaylord. Good to see you again, sir. Hey, thanks for having me, Dave. Yeah, we're going to talk about something specific, and I think the Michigan Supreme Court, they just heard arguments about this, and it's very interesting. It would go into minimum wage, but it would also go into tipped uh, ser servers, waitresses, waiters, how they get paid. What do you know as of right now, where does this stand when it comes to specifically tipped employees, for example, at your restaurant or at any other restaurant in the state? Yeah, this is a this has been kind of a crazy issue to to even understand and then to follow. Um, the biggest thing for us as as a small restaurant um, is the removal of the tip credit. So if anybody doesn't know what the tip credit is, it's the lower minimum wage for tipped employees, bartenders, uh, staff that work at a golf course, um, baggers, that type of thing. We have a ton of golf courses around here. That's how I got my start. Those employees can be paid, I believe right now it's $384 an hour, but they also have to claim cash tips in order to get themselves up to the regular minimum wage. So they call it a tip credit wage. And for restaurants, and this affects a lot of businesses, not just restaurants, right? I mean, this is an overall hike in the, in the general minimum wage as well. But for the removal of the tip credit, I mean, this is something that's kind of unheard of in Michigan. And we know that's kind of been happening on the West Coast a little bit. Um, but for for us in the restaurant business, it's a big deal. I mean, a lot of restaurants have several employees in the front of the house, as we call it, bartenders, waitstaff, that get paid tips as part of their income. Now, they should be reporting them somewhere to the IRS. But um, again, cash tips, a lot of restaurants require maybe 20%. Um, of your overall take for the day is what you actually contribute uh, or or claim, uh, as we call it. Okay, and this would good put it from tipped employee three eighty four, I think, an hour to eleven seventy three an hour. So the argument uh, for or the concern among tipped staff is that if if I know or the customer knows that they're making more, they're not going to be tipped as much. And you said, is is that true? Is there research that that is is the case? I, I, has California gone there or? There, there is a little bit of evidence to point towards um, a couple of states have gone away from the tipped wage, California specifically being one of them. They may even be at $20 an hour right now. And I believe that's where um, a lot of these groups that are advocating for the passage of the fight for 15 folks were some of the people that were initially pushing this. And it's worth noting that the Republicans, so I believe this was a ballot initiative back in 2017 or 2018, 18. Republicans... Uh, adopted it and amended it in the same session. So that anybody that knows the Iron Pig knows that we've been in court a little bit and constitutional yep. issues are, you know, kind of what we gab about from time to time. So that's why I've been following this. Uh, and it looks like there's nothing unconstitutional about adopting and amending in the same session as the Republicans did in 2018, although it looks a little um, conspicuous and maybe not the best way to govern. Um, we're going to see what the Supreme Court is, uh, Michigan Supreme Court is going to have to say about that, hopefully here pretty soon, because it really does affect a lot of businesses and you know restaurants that are finally emerging from some of the damage that was done from COVID from the last couple of years. Yeah, and many of them put out of business. So what if you have to pay your employees uh, you know, more because the profit margin, especially in restaurants, I've been learning, it is so tight. Uh, the profit margin and to to have to boost your the pay to your staff, it, it's going to hurt some. I don't know if it could run some businesses out of business, but it's going to hurt. There are a lot of statistics that um, can project uh, exactly what kind of damages can have to our industry, especially in Michigan. Um, uh, specifically, price increases on the menu, uh, service fees may now be added. Um, and then of course the dreaded restaurants that are going to go out of business. And a lot of consumers forget that a hourly paid employee also, it's not just that $11 an hour, we're actually paying more of that because the employer does contribute to payroll taxes. So $11 an hour actually is a little bit more than $11 an hour or 15, the fight for 15. It's actually for an employer 
it's it's a little bit more. It's not a lot more, but when we're talking about things at scale, um, it, it's it's important. It, it's not an, an insignificant amount of money. Exactly. So what if you were the power that be, should this just not what should happen? I what I think should happen is so some of this uh, ended up being tied to inflation. I believe it might have been the Republicans that amended that they pushed out some of the timelines. What I would like to see and eventually it's the removal of the tip credit. What I would like to see is the tip credit still be a part of the program, maybe at a sliding scale percentage as it was proposed as tied to inflation. Um, what I like about a tipped wage, and again, uh, my wife is a bartender here in our restaurant. So I kind of get to sit on both sides of the aisle on this one. Um, our bartenders make significant tips. We have a tip pool. Our concept is you order at a counter, they deliver drinks and cocktails and then wait on you like regular. But what that allows them to do is wait on nearly a hundred seats with only about three servers. So meritocracy is a big thing with bartenders and servers. It's very easy to tell who the good ones and bad ones are. And this kind of removes meritocracy from that whole thing. Forget what you'll say about what it can have, what effects it might have on the consumer mentality is with regards to tipping, knowing that that person's now is getting more money per hour. Am I going to tip at 15% or only 10%? Um, what I would like to see is, is still that tip wage, that tip credit still involved somehow. We pay above the tip credit wage here. 383 is kind of a joke. Um, some places actually bartenders will owe money in they'll get a negative paycheck because if they're not claiming enough of their cash tips what they have to pay in for payroll taxes actually depletes their paycheck it, it does happen and usually it happens to the best bartenders and, and wait wait staff um, not necessarily so much here iron pig we have a nice tip pool almost 80 percent of our credit card tips go on our our uh i'm sorry 80 percent of those that cash out use a credit card and those go on our, our employees' paychecks. So the big thing is that they're also trying to correct is the sort of kind of welfare mentality that this is perpetuating, yeah. which is why they want to move people up to $15 to $20 an hour. Our employees don't suffer that malady. They can get car loans. They can get mortgages. When my wife and I got um, our mortgage back in 2014, they wouldn't take her income because she virtually didn't show any income because her paychecks were so small, but she had so yeah. much cash stacked in the bank. They didn't necessarily care about that. They wanted to see her recurring income. I had the what same issue with here my yeah. allows our, our employees to actually be able to sow that. So we we've kind of preempted this a little bit. Um, but for other restaurateurs out there that might be listening, if you're not looking at that dynamic for 30, 30, 30 pricing, you're going to have to start changing that dynamic. And we may see, you know, the price of a cheeseburger really start to skyrocket. Yeah. And it's, and, and a lot of people don't understand why that may happen. The average public, and it's good for them to understand as well, because you hear a lot of people just, Oh, it's corporate greed. There's so much more that goes into, and people don't know. Some people don't know how tight the profit margins are with restaurants. You, you know, you're not rolling in cash. Most, re most small business restaurant owners are not, rolling in the cash. It's just not that, the case. That's right. And it's it's a game of numbers ultimately. And you try to you try to push those percentages down as much as you can. You turn the lights off to keep your overhead down. You turn the heat down, all those things. And we try and cut back labor. You know, this time of year it's 40 degrees and raining right now. So we don't have, you know, a lot of tourist traffic, unfortunately, right now. But that's that's the name of the game. And, you know, food cost is a big thing. That's that's the one that we're just kind of now getting back under control. And now we're having this discussion about labor being wildly out of control. So unfortunately, it's nothing new for us, but it's just a, a different uh, a different way that we're going to have to manage things. I appreciate you joining us.